Hello everybody. Today I'd like to model how to approach an academic text uh, and, and a couple of the other things as well. I'm doing this on a PDF file so I might show you some, some nifty tricks that you can do to annotate a PDF um, aggressively and to deeply read an academic text. And I have that piece of academic text here because I am doing research on, guess what, how to coach students to look at serious academic texts and read them deeply. So I have here uh, an article that I like, The Importance of Teaching Academic Reading Skills in First Year University Courses. It's a, uh, obviously a reputable source here. It's journals peer reviewed. Here is our author. And the abstract is right here. And I can already tell by the abstract that uh, this is going to be good. So you can go up here to your comments and you can, well, I did it. I can show comment marking toolbar and grab my pen here. And I can see just right here, this is something that I am uh, uh, really gonna, gonna need if I wanna teach my students to read academic texts very deeply. So we're gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you guys a uh, model for you how to you know, annotate and approach a, a deep text. I'll do a quick version of it because, well, because I only get a 15 minute free version of this program and because I can also verbally annotate things here as I go. So let's see what this thing's gonna be about. It seems like the author is establishing a problem right here that professors uh, generally take their students' reading skills for granted and suppose that they've already acquired these skills and, and really they haven't. And so this needs to be a, a more important part of the curriculum. And so I absolutely agree. This is definitely something that I am going to need to, um, to help my students do as well. So you can tell I've already read this and, and, and annotated. I've got a couple little spots here that I'd like to stop and just point out. I wrote the word map here because this really maps out the document. I can tell very quickly if this is something I'm going to need uh, by just reading this over here. Um, so it looks like he's going to um, set up some research. He's going to explore the categories of analysis needed to read academic text. I'm excited about that, but definitely here uh, I'm excited that he's going to share some teaching and learning activities aimed at fostering students' adoption of deep approach to reading. So, fantastic. I'm going to look here, surface and deep approaches to reading. We're going to get right to this paragraph here. Oh, wow. Surface approach to reading. He really uh, looks at this very closely and he unpacks a surface approach to what he calls down here uh, a deep approach to reading, right? Uh, where the reader uses higher order cognitive skills as the ability to analyze, synthesize, solve problems, and think metacognitively. That's kind of thinking about thinking. Uh, I like that contrast a lot, so I'm going to point it out here in my notes. I'll grab my pencil and kind of point it out. Right? Contrast. Because this is basically a, a, a thematic idea. And whenever I see thematic statements, what I like to go back to, I'll put a T and I'll circle it. And that, that says, okay, basically, here's a, a big thematic part of the article. And if you guys have these these things, these idiosyncrasies that you do, um, keep doing them. They really actually help you help trigger your memory and help you access texts in the future. He does this really cool study. Um, he looks at some students that, uh, that are reading deeply, some that have been trained and some that have not. Um, and then he actually does it on his own students. And I'm going to fast forward to that point here in his own study. Right on the third week of the second term, he gets all these students together from his legal course and he gives them an article. And the article is bias. And he wants to know what they're going to do with it, right? So I'm going to say, wow, cool. This is an interesting little experiment. Neo. Um, the author implies this moon agreement. And he's talking about international uh, space exploration of the moon and, and, and legal things. And he's comparing them to the convention of the law of the sea. Uh, by the way, if you, uh, the law of the sea is exactly where we got that pencil game in economics where you guys were picking pencils up off the floor. That was actually designed by, um, by an economics institute to simulate the law of the sea. So you can kind of see where we're going here as far as incentives and what the author uh, is looking at. And uh, he's trying to persuade readers the international uh, regime is to deal, with the, uh, to deal with the exploration of the moon would be the same as the one that governs the high seas. So this is the author's agenda. Um, so I'm going to put here a, a note, uh, or actually just an arrow that says, oh, wow, this is, this is really interesting. Let's come back and take a look at this. I have a star here that I left myself. Um, look at this. Most, appro um, 
most students took a surface approach. They didn't question the author's arguments. They took them at face value. None realized the comparison between the convention and the law of the sea was a strategy adopted by the author. Wow, weird, cool. You ever read texts like that? I mean, how many of you just take things that you read as conventional facts? So I'm going to put a wow here. Like, this is really cool. This is what the author is really wanting his reader to get from this. So they failed to connect the problem in question to broader legal issues. You know, and this, this part is really interesting, kind of the exceptions. One student uh, made relationships, or, or one of them uh, made relationships to other topics analyzed in class. Two consulted other texts. So there's a great strategy, right? Make your connections. Uh, Two analyzed, consulted other other texts uh, from uh, assigned articles, kind of went outside the box, and only one actually read stuff that the author written just to get a sense of who this guy was. Great learning strategies here. Uh, so I'll put here great, you know, and, and shorthand learning strategies. So as a teacher, I, you know, I know I'm going to come back to that because I want my students to be able to do that. So. Um, he said, now he contrasts that with a group of students that took a deep approach. Right? He says, what, what are they able to do? So you have these people approaching this text in a much, much different way. And so my big takeaway here, I, I'm going to want a text box here. Um, my students to be able to do this. How do I do it? Right? So that's my connection with this text. And that's what I'm looking for now when I'm reading this. This is how do I get my students to read deeply? So let's find out. So reading academic texts here. I'm going to go grab my pencil. So here's an important just kind of pre-contextual thing. It's not just finding information. It's a lot more than that. It's a process of working with the text. I love this phrase here, um, process of working with the text, reading an academic text, and recreating the meaning of the text together with the author. In other words, readers negotiate the meaning of the authors by applying their prior knowledge to it. And that is really a fundamental part of reading deeply. You're not just reading facts. You're putting those facts in context of the other things that you know. It's called intertextuality. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make a note here of a text box here. This is something that I really want my students to be able to identify and do themselves. It's called intertextuality. So probably yeah, they won't even recognize it. So it's about creating a relationship between your knowledge, the text, and all of the other texts that are out there surrounding this thing. It's a really fundamental concept that I want my students to learn. So I'm going to grab my pencil and I'm going to circle it again here with an exclamation mark because that's important for me. So we're going to move along here. These categories of analysis, this sets up an important framework that I want my students to know here. I want them to read purpose, context, author's thesis, deconstruction of assumptions, and the evaluation of author's arguments, and then finally, the consequences of author's arguments. Right? I want my students to know that. And so I'm going to make another note to myself here. How do I get my students to do this? Hey, look at this. There's an interesting word. I know it's related to this guy somehow. I don't know what it means. It's not what he wrote or anything. Where else does it have a capital letter here? But um, I want to know more about it. So I'm going to put a V there for vocabulary. So I'm going to come back and, and take, a, take a closer look at that. Here's a really interesting thought. And I think students would, would uh, really pick up on this well here. Uh, students don't read texts according to this author because they don't know why they're supposed to read these things in the first place, right? They don't read them deeply because what's the point, right? So I'm going to put why. Why should students read stuff? And this is, well, well, 
they should ask, right? They should say, well, why am I actually reading this? Why is this important to me in my life? Well, a totally legitimate question for students to ask. I think they should probably do that more often. Um, so I'll put why here, and you know, I'll grab my pen and I'll kind of underline it a couple of times. We'll move on here for sake of time. Um, I want to encourage my students to do some research about the author. What a what a novel idea! Understand their their opinion and and what it relate how it relates to main, mainstream school of thought. And is this is this person um, a fringe? Per, does he exist on the margins of the discipline, or is this kind of pretty standard? And it's really difficult to know that if you're just reading one thing that the author has written. Read two or three articles written by this guy. Google them, uh, right? A lot of these people will show up on Wikipedia pages. You'd be really surprised at how, how prolific some of these authors are. That's when you start looking into it. Identifying the author's thesis. Now there's a I don't know how I would get this. I want a specific thing that I can use, right? So how do I get my students to do that? So I'm making me a note just so I can come back and try to process this data when I've read a couple more articles that, that can help me out. I encourage my students to try and understand. Also really easy to say, really difficult to actually achieve. I want to know what kind of strategies that I can use. We are kind of running out of time, so I am going to go down here to the, the strategies. So we're going to skip down here. Talk about a little bit of the, the validity of the author's argument. So he's establishing that this is important. Um, again, I want to know why. Teachers need to show our students the importance of evaluating our okay, sure, but why? Tell me why. I'm going to have this. Tell me why. And tell me how, guy, author, you, you give me something I can use as a teacher. So, moving on down, more thematic stuff. Consider the, the, the consequences of the argument used by the author. Very good, very good. Moving on down, constructive alignment. This is actually uh, about how to get students who are reading the same text uh, to, to, to approach it in a different way and read deeper. We're not really in that position for senior project, so we're going to skip over a couple of these strategies, but it does have some interesting things down here at the bottom. Aha! Look at that. Examples of teaching and learning activities that foster a deep approach to reading. Awesome. I love it. That's what I'm looking for. So, um, here's a couple of things. This amazing race. This sounds like a really fun idea. Again, it's geared to all students reading the same text, so it doesn't really work for me. And I use this approximately equal sign. You know, I'll do something like that to say, okay, well, this is good, but it's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to keep going. Here's another activity. Again, they're all reading kind of the same thing for the same purpose, not necessarily looking for us. But when we get down here to his conventional activities, this is stuff that I can really use. So I'm going to put an exclamation mark right here and say, all right, let's get down to business here. We've got double entry journals. We have um, uh, and a little description of that, parallel columns. I'll say, you know, I want to use this. I would. Um, just for sake of time. So we've got to get moving here. Oh, concept mapping. This is a great idea here. Can I, can I come back to this? Can I set up an exercise to help my students do this? That's what I want to do. Yeah, take an apply, get deeper meaning out of it to the very end. So this is this is really where I want my focus here. So I'm just gonna, in the interest of time, I have to come back to this and read it a little bit deeper. I'm gonna put focus here, and I'm gonna circle it. And we're we're pretty much out of time. I'm gonna scroll down here. We're right at the conclusions. These are really good and useful to read. Uh, again, even if you're starting the article to say, is this a text that I can use? Does it speak to my interests? And of course, being an academic text, check out the references. This looks like APA stuff to me. A lot of stuff cited here. Ooh, I like this guy a lot. Um, and that's what a bibliography looks like. So there is your intro to 
how to approach an academic text and read it deeply. Enjoy. <laughs>